Hey everybody, Thomas here, and today we're going to go over kind of the initial break-in period for your sawmill. Now, I have already shot this video once before. I'm doing something I rarely ever do. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a second take. <laughs> and the reason is because the first video I did was 21 minutes long, and I'm not going to try to have you sit through 21 minutes on some really important information. I don't want anyone to miss anything. So I've already done all the maintenance and everything, and we're going to talk about what I just did, and we're going to go over some key things. All right, so first things first, when you get your brand new mill, you do not want to cut the largest log that you have. I know a lot of folks are super excited when they get their mill, and they really want to do that, but at the same time, what you should really be doing is breaking in solely because there's a lot of things that could go wrong in that initial you know, 10 hours or so, that's what they say to break in your engine and stuff like that, that you don't want to make uh, a big mistake on. Plus, by maxing out your mill the first time, um, yeah, it's just, you wouldn't take a brand new car and take her out to 120 miles an hour the first time with an engine that has literally like one hour of run time. You want to make sure uh, you, you go through that initial break-in period, and really I'd like to go through that initial oil change period. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it, it's best to start off slow, plus you're learning your new machine. Everything's tight. When things are tight, you got to push harder and stuff like that until everything wears in. So I like to start off on smaller logs first. I've had this mill now for roughly three or four weeks or something to that effect. Nearly a month. Let's just say it's a month I've had this machine. I think I've cut 15 logs. The largest log has been maybe 18 inches in diameter, but I'm kind of keeping it small and just learning the machine and I'm listening to the machine. The, listening to the machine will tell you if there's anything going on, whether it's a manual mill, whether it's a fully hydraulic mill. If you start hearing a new, you know, vibration, tink, ting, whatever that sound may be, investigate. Now is the time to investigate because also you're in that 30 day period and no money, no questions asked kind of return policy, but also you want to make sure you're fully working the machine up to where she should be. Uh, just like how we do trials on ships. We start off slowly through the testing process and then we start doing longer and longer and longer. And we do a four hour you know, main engine run or something like that. So start off slow and it'll make you a better sawyer if you've never saw it before. Okay, so things we're talking about is when you get the brand new mill and everything, it will have a light coating of grease on a lot of the manufacturers, you know, pieces and parts that they, that they, are, that they buy. So the manufacturer of the chains, there might be a light coating of oil on there, or there might be, you know, some grease in the bearings and stuff like that on your, your log dogs and the, the, the bar assembly that helps to twist it up and down. Long story short, I go through, we're going to show that here in a second, with automatic transmission fluid and spray it on everything. Uh, that, as you can see on here, I've got that, I mean, I've got it everywhere. Automatic transmission fluid has detergents and whatnot in it. It doesn't. It will, it limits the amount of dust and debris that will stick to it. If you went out here and you put grease on this track, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, it would, it would actually do it, the job it's meant to do. However, it will attract everything else. If a bug lands on it, if dirt, debris, sawdust, hair, whatever, you'll have all that gunk on there forever. Automatic transmission fluid helps to keep that down, but also helps to lubricate and keep things freely moving. So make sure you're doing that. Um, I've gone through, I sprayed all my sprockets as well, and I'm going to go through and hit my grease fittings, make sure I put a little bit of squirt in there. You don't want to blow out the bearings and stuff like that, but we want to put just enough in there and do it every so often. I might hit that rod right there where all those bearings are maybe once a month or once every other month, depending on how much I'm using it. Um, but really, those bearings I've never really had an issue with, and these chains right here, again, I don't like to have rust or and the first thing i had to do when i got my mill and it's not fully done is i had to get structure over it i do not want my mill to sit out in the elements i want to make sure i keep her as um, close to indoors as i can that'll just you know prolong you know the life of the mill and reduce the amount of maintenance i have to do on the mill it keeps everything cleaner all right so anything that's new such as these right here these turners and stuff like that um, that's metal on metal so i'll spray a little bit in there same thing any pivot point anywhere there's a, a place where it's metal on metal i like to spray oil case in point right here the log turner this log turner right here is brand new this chain is tight i'm actually going to go back and loosen up this chain you loosen up this chain right here with these two bolts so there's a bolt right here and a bolt right here that will slide this this pin assembly up or down and hence loosen up this chain. When I first got this mill, I was using the log turner. I kept on feeling this weird vibration, hearing like, like a really loud tick, 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 tick. 
I'm like, what the heck is that? What it turned out to be is this sprocket right here was trying to turn on that pin that goes through right there. And there was no uh, media between the two. It was metal on metal. And you could actually feel, hear, all sorts of stuff like that. The actual grinding that was occurring. So I'm going to loosen up this chain right here. And we've applied the, uh, the automatic transmission fluid in there. Same thing on your log um, dog in and out. There is a chain on the bottom here, oftentimes neglected, and there's a sprocket right here. Spray that sucker down. It ain't going to hurt nothing. It'll only help. It will decrease the coefficient of friction and make sure that it's not shearing away metal. It gives something in between it, a good filter media. Also, I didn't really do it now, but um, this bar right here, these right here are like a Teflon type material. There's some kind of plastic in it. You can see there is some already scratch marks here. As you get dirt, debris, sawdust on the mill, this sliding back and forth, uh, you'll get crap that builds up underneath there and you'll get some extra friction on here. I like to spray this down with automatic transmission fluid as well. Again, it gives it a, a, a media to decrease the coefficient of friction between the two. I'll talk about this in another video. This is something that we've worked on to allow us to cut stuff that's less than four inches. We can actually cut three inches, but that's for another video. It's a sleeve that a uh, buddy of mine, we are kind of testing out my buddy from pro built uh, fabrications and I'll, I'll we'll talk about that more because we've tested up my dad's mill and then this mill we're just making sure we can standardize those and we'll talk about that later but again uh, another thing if you have a hydraulic mill that does have this log dog in and out you've got four bolts that hold on that hydraulic motor on the other side these four bolts are there's you know one on top here one down here and then there's two on the other side as well as this thing goes in and out, up and down, it's being torqued and flexed and stuff like that. Those will loosen up. I guarantee you, if you've never checked those bolts and you've had your mill for more than a year, some of those you'll be able to turn by hand. So anyone watching this video, please go out to your mill, check those four bolts, tighten them down. You may actually want to take them out and put some Loctite on them, but those are very difficult to get to. Um, I warned you. <laughs> Um, I've talked to many of my friends and they've all said, thank you for telling me that sometimes they might be, even be missing. They're very short bolts and they don't have, um, a lot really holding them in there. So what I'm using here is this ZEP bottle here with automatic transmission fluid. This is just the universal automatic transmission fluid. It's pretty cheap. However, the price of everything is going up here recently. So not as cheap as you would think. Um, anyways, just spray her on there. I ain't going to hurt none. A little bit goes a long way or a lot goes even further. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, any kind of moving parts, I like to put that on there to help decrease the coefficient of friction. All right. Whenever you are running your mill for the first time, one of the things you really should check or anything is each time you run, just feel this, feel this, make sure you don't have any play in here, but feel, are you getting any heat in this bearing right here? If so, you could have an issue, but really that's something you won't typically see till much further on in the life of a sawmill. Uh, past like the thousand hour point, 1500 hours is when a lot of people will start seeing some kind of uh, bearing failure going on there. Sometimes less, sometimes more. That depends on a lot of factors. Um, one of which is how tight you're running your blade. And I'll talk about that a little bit in this video, but later in another video. Also, you want to make sure that your bearings right here, these are being greased properly and everything. You don't want to put too much in there. I am pretty notorious. I put my Sorry, the sunlight here. I put this, uh, there we go, uh, water delivery system on this side of the bearing. You got to be careful doing that. If you're running soap and stuff like that, you're going to get water into this bearing and you can wash out the bearing. So, because it's a detergent and it'll take that oil and stuff out. Some people run it, well, I just knocked it off, but some people run it on the other side there. Um, the reason I run it on this side is because I want it to. Uh, have the maximum allowable cutthroat that I can. And by having it on this side, uh, that's that's what we do. Now that, as you see, popped right off. And that's a good thing. If you blow up a blade or something like that, or if you hit it, it'll pop off here rather than break it. Now it's just underneath the mill. I gotta remember to go pick it up. Uh, another thing you wanna do is check these bearings. If, if these are hot right here, odds are you may not have grease in there. So check those every so often as well. Um, again, when you're running the mill, You'll hear rattles and stuff like that, especially on a new mill. Now this mill here, what I did is I, I tweaked the door a little bit. As you can see, kind of maybe I bent that door in at the bottom so that she won't rattle on here as much. I still have to bend it a little bit more, but I don't like 
you know, rattles and stuff like that. I'm trying to, now this does rattle back and forth. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put probably some duct tape on the bottom and that'll help quiet it up a little bit. I just don't like the rattles. Okay, very important right here. I'm watching my time, I'm trying to go fast. Uh, you wanna make sure that this metal point, this, uh, this um, pin that goes through is oiled. Now, as you can see, it's all red right now. I sprayed hydraulic, or excuse me, automatic transmission fluid on here. These sprockets right here spin on that pin and there's nothing between it. If you're not oiling this, bad things happen. AKA, you start to create a wear point on that pin and it will start to throw off your measurements on your scale. I know it sounds weird, but over time you can get a compounding error that occurs, especially in a computer system, if these pins start wearing down. So you have this pin here, you have this pin here, and you have one where the other chain comes down right there, there's a pin. You wanna make sure you're hitting these pins. There's three of these pins. So this one right here, cause this sprocket right here moves independently from this pin on each one of these. Very important that you're doing that. Please make sure you're doing that. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Also, when you're running your brand new mill for the first time, it's not uncommon to get hydraulic leaks on any of your hydraulic connections and stuff like that. So we're gonna show you where I actually identified a hydraulic leak that I just found during the first shooting of this video. Another important thing, these right here, you've got Zerk fitting here, you got a Zerk fitting up forward. You've got four Zerk fittings on your carriage that are allowed to go back and forth down the track and everything. And you wanna make sure that the Zerk fittings are being hit because in there, there's a bearing of course, and or a roller. That roller, if you're not hitting that Zerk fitting, will stick up and it can cause actually like a flat point. And then you'll get like a section where your, your mill will kind of like do this lope down the track. You don't want that if you're cutting quality lumber so make sure you're greasing those you know those right there there's no uh, seal or anything like that you can put as much or as little as you want in there as long as they're being greased uh, also up and down right here again you have a friction point right here you've got this bar you've got these teflon things make sure you're keeping that clean especially if you're cutting um, pine and stuff like that and some of the sap will build up on there i also put hydraulic or excuse me automatic transmission fluid on there make sure those are being done uh, very important up top. Let me get out of the sun. Up top here, you have a. I'll climb up there. You have a connection where this sprocket goes through. Um, or the, excuse me, this bar right here. So you got this metal bar that goes through, and the sprocket is on there. This sprocket does not free move, or if it does, you have big problems because then we're going to talk about why. I can't feel right now, but there's a, there is a, I can see it right there. There's a set screw. Make sure that set screw is in because that sprocket is on a keyway. You want that sprocket to stay still because they're supposed to move in conjunction at the same time in tandem because you have one on this side right here. If you ever get an issue where your head is surging forward on one side more than the other, odds are you have a timing issue. It could be because that set screw has come out or it could be because you have jumped a link on that chain. I have a video. I will try to put the video in the uh, link below, but if you ever jump that chain right there, and that can be jumped from moving the mill head too far fast or backwards, it causes a shock wave and causes that chain to jump over. If that does jump, I can show you how to uh, remove that or take that extra link forward or back and you know create or fix the timing on your saw head. Uh, of course, check your fluids and stuff like that on your engine. Um, on the diesel engine, the first 50 hours, you have to change the oil. So make sure you're doing that. That's pretty simple and straightforward. Let's see if I can get down without busting my butt. Okay, so fuel tank. One of the things on all the diesel engines, you all obviously have fuel going into the engine, but you have a return back to the fuel tank. It's taking out more than she's returning. That makes sense because you're burning fuel for the engine. However, over time, this right here might de uh, decompress or compress down, if you will. So you might get some weird stuff here. They do not have a breather on top of this. And I understand why, but there's certain things you can do to fix that. You don't want to get sawdust and stuff in here, but if you put a breather with a filter on top of here. One of my buddies, Gary, just did that on his mill. I'll be doing the same on here. That'll prevent this tank from kind of sucking down and make sure you have proper airflow uh, through your fuel. The inline fuel filter right here, nice to have. I'm probably gonna actually change this out to a uh, fuel water separator. My buddy Gary also did that. I'm gonna be doing that where I attach something right here and have where I can drain off any water before she gets to my fuel pump, before she gets to my 
fuel filter on the actual diesel engine itself. All right, so leak I was talking about as I was discussing some stuff on this uh, con um, uh, solenoid system here, I found a leak around here. I don't know exactly where the leak is coming from because this was caked up in sawdust, but the caking of sawdust is a big indicator that we have an issue. And you can see down below here, you know, it was obviously dropping down here as well. So I have a leak right here. I'm going to have to watch and see where she comes out and everything. I'll get this all cleaned up, run the mill a little bit after the oil heats up, and we'll figure out where that leak's at. One of the things I was discussing as well is on a new mill, especially on any mill that's got the, um, well, really only on the mill that has the solenoid control valve here. If you're cutting really, really dry material like cedar, I've been cutting white cedar. When I look down into there, where those two pin connectors are, I had sawdust in there. Now, there is a little gasket material right around the base of that. Not a bad idea that once you have this in here to put maybe a, a little bit of grease or some something around the top here to prevent sawdust from getting in there. It won't do it to the bottom one because, of course, gravity is helping you and it goes away. But the top here, uh, if you get sawdust stuff in there, you can cause this to not function properly and it'll throw off your computer a little bit aka it won't let it come up uh, i did a video on that as well uh, quick easy fix um other than that uh whenever you're operating your mill never and there's certain situations where you might need to but try really hard never to take anything off on the side where your energy chain is if you're taking off logs or boards or something on the side of your energy chain you're asking for a problem this energy chain is not cheap I think it was around $75 a linear foot. So yeah, if you crush, say three feet of that, you just made a pretty expensive mistake. So I always have a, try to have a good habit of when I'm done cutting a log, I will always put these log stops up so that next time I load a log, I want to get off and you know load them up. But it's always create a, a good habit, create some good habits whenever you're operating your mill so that it makes your process more streamlined but also saves you the headache of breaking stuff all right i think i've hit just about everything the odd the, the big thing is is as you run your mill and everything listen just listening to your mill can tell you if something's wrong um i mean if you hear a new rattle if you hear a new whatever stop what you're doing try to find said rattle and see if you can find the fix oftentimes it's probably something pretty easy but oftentimes, if uh, if you do find something that could be bad, you'll be thanking yourself that you stopped to listen to what your machine was doing. I On this engine right here, whenever I'm cutting big stuff, I listen to the tune of the engine, and that's what determines my speed of cut through it. So you'll become accustomed to, as you run a mill more and more, you'll know what the norm is. And if anything's out of the norm, it's best, if you can at the moment, to stop to figure out what's going on. So again, <laughs> I shaved off two minutes. Uh, three minutes. Hopefully this was helpful to y'all. I tried my best to do it as fast as I could. Uh, I really enjoy this stuff. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. And also I'll try to put some links to other videos where I correct things. If I find things that are wrong on my sawmill, I will do a video to show my correction because that right there can be helpful for someone else. I've had great luck calling Timber King um, to fix a lot of issues or, you know, bring up issues. If they don't know the answer, they probably know someone who knows the answer. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create a database that people can look up and say, hey, here's my uh, issue. Here's a you know, proposed, proposed fix that might work. So again, please like subscribe. The channel is growing a whole lot. I love that the channel is growing. And I'm looking forward to some really cool stuff. Next weekend, I'm going to the Great Lakes logging and large or heavy equipment expo down in green bay i really wish i knew about that sooner because i might have seen like hey can i set up a exhibit or booth myself but we'll see all right y'all hopefully i'll see some y'all there i'll try to do a video of that as well but looking forward to it very excited to live up here in wisconsin enjoying it thus far stay safe have fun sawing and if you have any questions or comments please let me know thanks